everyone. I'm Kim Stewart. I created the MA experiment um, selection of films that you saw at the end there. Um, first of all, I just want to say thanks to the Arts Council for funding the event, and thanks to the Brighton Digital Festival and Joseph Norman, who organized tonight with Natalie at the Delaware Pavilion and all the staff at Delaware, and to the artists for letting me show their work. So I'd like to introduce Max Hattler and Sebastian Berkner, who showed Shift and Blurbell. I just had a couple questions for them to start off, and then if anyone else has any questions, you're all welcome to pitch in. Um, so first of all, Max, I just wondered how you got into moving in the it's a long story. I don't know, I was always uh, drawing and painting as a kid. Um, then in my teens I started making music, using computers. And then when it came to the side of the study, I didn't know which way to go. Because I didn't want to study music. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I... It, it took a while, but eventually I realized that animation was a way of uh, bringing both my visual and my kind of sound uh, and musical interests and interest in working with computers into kind of one, one form. And Sebastian, same question. Yeah, it's actually quite similar. Sound. I mean, I, I studied the fine arts and the and you know, as long as I can remember, I was like drawing, painting, and, and kind of uh, using every kind of techniques that I could with my own there on, and, and uh, just always was very investigative towards the materials, and, but I was quite restless in that. And then, then of course, out of curiosity as well, I was just uh, into animation, because um, only like you as a one person could just do computers, you could just make. A, a lot like um, a lot of cheese itself, it could be like a, like a, like a filmmaker without actually meeting people, so it's really strange. And, and all the kind of concerns which I had with all uh, the things that I did prior, suddenly in that one forward and then I can go all these things and you know, all this investigation I could do it there, so somehow I kind of just got stuck with it. And it, 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 it turned more experimental. Um, then they're all stopped like shaking and using it. And it sounds quite important in your work with the image, the abstract images. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very important to sum up this. Because um, um, all of the pieces that come, you generate everything that is, you can create every imagery you saw from them, and, um, and then often that's quite an artifact of the world. And, um, in the beginning, I was using that real world, um, and some of it was also quite a flash for the thing which interests me in actually regenerating the, um, um, the, the certain representation, the language I was building up or investigating. It was, um, I felt like at the point, like the sound has to do the same um, work as well. So, so often, um, actually, sound needs. Uh, I mean, Right now, so like, I'm treating the sound also as, as a reduced, like a shape or form of animation that has to go to a certain kind of process in order to um, actually support each other. In the beginning, it's very really funny about using sound, it just validates what you're drawing. If you have a funny looking thing, but you um, put a um, sound the clock there, and it's something you want to release. This is the clock, so it's very also you can actually use sound in a way where you need don't have to go that far because we draw on the skills of them, but the sound actually makes up the whole thing. And we also go by musical sound. I'm always interested in kind of emotive kind of uh, creation of something, and, and then the sound is just a tool which is kind of funny. It's just a little hard to do. That's enough. So, in many ways, you use stop motion. Are you making the sound as you go, or is it something you um, about later? It, it depends a little bit, it's from project to project, but with, uh, with Shift, I made the 
payments first, and then um, and then work for the longest time. Or rather, I gave uh, the son David uh, that come, uh, another German <laughs> made the uh, made the sound of that one. It's quite difficult because because I have this kind of background in working with with audio. Um, so as a result, I think I'm quite picky. But I've sort of started up, or, or sort of over the years, I've been kind of um, giving it to other people more rather than doing it myself. But but still, I, I want to have quite a lot of say about how it sounds and how it works with the image, and, and I want things to be very sync. To, um, so it was quite it was quite hard for him, and he was I think the third person I. I, sort of, I worked with on the project yeah. and, and with the others I kind of had to, well it didn't quite, it didn't quite work out and he, he, was, he was the one who then kind of stuck with it and we had to go through several iterations of him doing something and then me saying I was just totally not what I wanted and then he'd be like okay I'll okay, just, you know, let's try again. So it was quite, it was difficult. Um, yeah, it's such, a, it's such an important part in the, in the process of kind of bringing, bringing the image to life or, or it's, it, it, it's, yeah, so it's tough. Can you tell us anything about what you're working on now? Um, right now I'm uh, working on a film uh, for a planetarium screen, the 360. Uh, Bulldog screen, which is a uh, new territory for me. So it's a bit of a learning curve, but uh, it's quite exciting. And what's the last one? Yeah, I'm just finishing. Sure. And it's a uh, kind of way to get into this, this stereoscopic world. It's really fast. It was like when I was at Werner Hatzog's Tafel, that I sat there and thought, I should not hate this technology, I should actually embrace it and see what's out there for on a kind of an artistic you know, uh, purpose. And uh, so it's not the common 3D thing where I mean where you have an object in space, but that for a whole edge in the space itself negotiates itself. So, um, so you find like an object is not at a place, it's several of those things, it's kind of space form. Visually it work with tons of uh, transparent layers and yeah. Is it still flash? It's still flash. Um, I think that, that that makes it also quite different because it's actually the, 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 um, the, the, the ingredients are still too deep, but then like just stack it so much you can have most of the track. And then I think I haven't worked with something that um, a bar is just it. Um, it's funny, um, if, if I would put like a normal flashlight and just back in, into a 3D space, you would just see the shape. It's mm -hmm. like a vector, vector, you know, the shape hanging there. Mm -hmm. So, in order to really get that, I had to move it shit to be able to be, you know, kind of lose track on the bottom. And that's actually the that artificial thing. So, so, but that also works towards space being um, totally unreliable as well. Can I ask a question about that? Is it um, is it difficult? Is it more difficult uh, for, for the eyes or to kind of understand the space? Because I guess if you start watching 3D films, maybe at the beginning you kind of don't really. It takes a while to kind of adjust to the for the eyes to kind of adjust mm -hmm. to that 3D vision. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of break that by doing things which maybe you know you aren't supposed to do or kind of. Mm -hmm. Uh, reflecting and kind of distorting your space, does that, does that make it more difficult? Um, I'm not going you? full out, like I, I think I could have been more extreme, so it, so it, so it, but still that what I wanted to achieve, that mm -hmm. um, the, there's kind of an overall visually in, in, in a sense, but it's not, it's not as painful as the, the flicker works it used to do, you know, mm -hmm. so it's actually, um, um, you really can engage in, I just finished just my platform like one sound as well, which validates the space. It's amazing. Like, suddenly, when I reached 
um, because that's a thing the sound is not what you see. As an animator, you work with the same chunk, with that, with that life you think, uh, you virtually think of, that, or that scene, which, like that living room or whatever you did, like, which, like, for so long. And I saw always with near sound for that scene. So if you then go later to a sound designer, and then it makes a different sound, you can really um, rotate it. But it's, it's, it's already a very song while I'm working on this. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I think, I think it's, it's not as, as straining as um, as the as like real three D because also with the real three D you have that uncanny moment as well where where you you have been through a lot of cinematic representation and somehow that's how we enjoy movies. That's certainly like, that's why like, it's kind of um, cinema isn't like reality. It doesn't look like the real world. There's so much more, in it, but still we believe it as being. We are just there in the cafe next to this couple talking to each other. Um, um, but then it's still um, 24 images flying through the machine. And so so I think this 3D I generated actually hasn't hasn't got like the, 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 like a real world really um, as kind of a uh, comparison. So it's a, it's it's a it's, it's a quite different view. Yeah. But you're not trying to make it better in the world. You're um, trying mean, to replicate anything. It, um, in the bigger sense, yes. I mean, also has like dialogue and things, and, and, and it's a it's kind of a, you know, they, so like a narrative to it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's much as uh, yeah. Uh, some of oh, it's the way I'm sort of very compressed now. Um, I have the school and then, um, but uh, what's that word called? Um, it's uh, called the Chimera of M, and it's uh, I think it's it's premiering in the in the LFF in the London Film Festival on 18th or so. October. Yeah, it's okay. not finished yet, but you can buy tickets for it. So, <laughs> you know, I guess it's really there. It's um, two three days. Great. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions for Alex or Sebastian? I'm not quite sure which animation you did on the. Um, Sebastian did the blur bell, the first one of the last well, the black and white. The black and white abstract. And Max did, it was called Shift, and it was lots of stop motion elements in it. Very cool. That was the first one. That was the second one. Well, the first we explained the black and white one. It's just a flash of the vector animating program. Came about um, when the web was still really slow. We had like some of the graphical interesting things um, with that program, but then um, we could really take that program somewhere else, um, which the program by itself can't deal anymore with the things I work with. But, you know, it's, very, it's very basic things. So it's flash, you mm -hmm. it's like this 3D flash, isn't it? Um, no, I'm, I'm going with 3D, I'm generating an After Effects. So so, but um, for one shot, I have you know between twenty or seventy layers. It's all very transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's quite it, it's really weird for a process. And then, but then I found like a script online so you can export each layer into a single flash file after the camera and build together. Wow. And you just can't step wrong there. But that's what's nice about. I think that generally applies to animation that, that you have a lot of limitations with technology and, and actually I, I like that the yeah, limitations yeah, still out there. But probably I, I couldn't animate in this like a CGI 3D thing because I think everything possible what you do with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that limitation of you know, strange possible I, I think it helps me on that. That's quite an interesting kind of idea. Idea of the limitations that artists kind of give themselves, and sometimes you can kind of be more creative with with that. Have you ever worked to a brief like that? Um, yeah, I think it's all about limitations, whether it's the software that dictates them or some other like conceptual constraints or formal constraints you put on yourself. Like with every, I, I, I do it conscious, sometimes consciously, sometimes not. More unconsciously with every project that 
Chef, for example, that you know, one of the constraints was that, that if everything is filmed from the same position, everything is on the black background, that it's, it's, it's only sub motion, you know, and then with another project, I would maybe only work in After Effects or only work in 2D or 3D. And, you know, there's always, yeah. you set yourself constraints to then try and generate ideas within that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah